Welcome to the Taiko Global Case um, Competition Q&A for the path to PwC, Kinsey, and more. So, hope you guys are all excited for the Q&A panel. Just to kick us off, I want to kind of gauge um, who's on the call, and I want to get to know you guys a little bit more. So, I'm just going to launch a quick poll. Um, have a look at the poll. Um, answer the poll. I want to see where you guys are coming from. Uh, where you are in high school, and it'd be just interesting to see um, the variety of students we have today. We can see that the majority of students are coming from Australia, New Zealand, which is awesome. Um, and we have a lot of senior high school students, which is really surprising. We have a lot of year 10 to year 13s, which is fantastic. For those who are in Australia and we don't have a year 13, uh, New Zealand students have year 13, just to give you a little bit more context. Uh, it's awesome to see you guys flow in and join the um, Q&A panel. And we're super excited today to give an insight into the world of consulting, the world of case competitions, and overall the world of business and entrepreneurship. Um, and we've got an exciting list of panel panelists and experts today who are really a cream of the crop. They're going to give you the best kind of insights and the best kind of advice um, that you're going to get. Um, and it's really exciting that you guys have access to uh, our panel of experts today. So how the flow of the Q&A session is going to work, we've got some questions that we're going to ask the panelists, but if you have any questions yourself, um, refer to the bottom. For some of you, it might be the top or the right, depending if you're on mobile. Um, and there's just a Q&A button. I highly recommend using the Q&A button to ask any questions because you can upvote your questions. So the more popular questions can rise to the top so we know which ones are better to ask. So please make sure to use the Q&A um, button if you do want to ask any questions to our panelists. Also on top of that as well, we do have a chat feature. The chat feature, um, try to avoid asking questions in there. If you want to just discuss among yourselves, that would be awesome. But um, all the questions, please let me reiterate, um, put them in the Q&A section and we will hopefully get to them. So let's kick it off. We've got um, some four exciting panelists today. So we've got Nathan, Jamie, Chelsea, and Sachin. And I'm just going to quickly go around and introduce them for you. So um, we'll start off with Nathan. Um, do you want to just give us a quick intro on who you are and what you do? Sure, yeah. So my name's Nathan. I'm currently well, about to be a senior at Wharton. Um, after graduation, I'm going to be going into investment banking in New York. Um, based in Canberra at the moment. Um, probably going to take my college semester virtually and I study finance and management at Warden and I guess about my ex experience in consulting I did one summer um, internship a few years back um, and yeah. Fantastic thank you so much. Um, Chelsea you want to give us a quick intro? Oh, Chelsea, I think you're still muted. We can't hear you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go for Rookie it. mistake. <laughs> um, I'm Chelsea. I'm a partner. Um, deals team. Um, and I've got about 20 years experience working in the sector. Um, I also spent seven years in our London transaction services team and was a PwC spokesperson for luxury issues um, in London. Um, while I was in London, I was also lucky enough to be the interim CFO at Jimmy Choo. So um, all the women on the phone will know Jimmy Choo, um, lovely um, footwear brand. Um, I've also had some other secondment roles in Australia. So Kiki K, Mecca Brands, um, and have been on a few advisory boards for Pure Baby, Whitner and Olga Berg. So big retail and consumer focus. Um, and yeah, look forward to the conversation tonight. Awesome. And for those who kind of missed the beginning part of Chelsea's, um, Chelsea's introduction, she is a, um, a partner at PwC Australia, which is very exciting. Uh, Jamie, do you want to give us a quick intro? Yeah, sure thing. Um, I'm a Kiwi, grew up in New Zealand. Um, like many of you on the call, when I was in high school, I was very passionate about studying overseas, but I didn't know much about the journey. And I went on sort of four years of hard work across academics, extracurriculars, leadership, and then applied to schools in the US and UK. Um, after getting into you know, most of the Ivy League schools as well as Cambridge, created Crimson to help guide international students all around the world um, for their dream universities and our careers. 
Um, since going to Harvard, I went on to do my MBA at Stanford, and I'm currently doing a Rhodes Scholarship at Oxford on online schooling. Um, and I really, really enjoy helping students navigating the challenges of breaking into finance, consulting, these other wonderful industries we're going to be focusing on, um, you know, throughout the case competition in this community that we have on the call today. Awesome. Thank you so much. And finally, Sachin, our final panelist, give us a quick intro. Yeah, of course. Um, hey, everyone. It's, it's great to be on the call um, with such a great team here. Uh, I was Harvard class of 2015, where I studied statistics and East Asian studies, so Mandarin Chinese. Um, I've done a diversity of internships in that time, spent time at Goldman, at Microsoft, uh, at Hay Group in Beijing, um, and then spent some time with Jamie as well in Sydney, uh, working with the Crimson team. Uh, since then, uh, I moved to San Francisco, spent three years at McKinsey, where I was an engagement manager um, for my last year there. And since then, have spent two years doing late stage tech investing at Y Combinator, uh, and, and now I'm starting my MBA at Stanford as well. Fantastic. Sounds super exciting. Good on you, Sachin. Um, all right. So let's kick it off. So as just a quick reminder as well, if you do have any questions, make sure to put them in the questions and answer section and upvote them if you want to see them answered kind of first. Uh, but just to kick things off, I have a question for Nathan and Sach Sachin. So maybe starting with Nathan. Both the same question to both of you. So what is consulting? And why do you think it's a great career path? And what are some of the most ex interesting experiences you guys had in consulting? Um, sure, yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure Sachin probably has a much better answer than me for this. But um, I guess in general, how I understand consulting is pretty much it's problem solving for clients. And um, obviously, that's a very broad thing. But the job is also very broad from, from what I can see. And the reason why um, I think it, it's a great career path is because much like banking um, and like a few other roles, um, it's, it's, a, it's like a very good stepping stone right out of college to go into multiple, like multiple sort of career paths. You're not pretty much set on doing consulting um, for the rest of your life. And, but that's obviously like an option as well. And I think for me, um, cause I interned in consulting um, for my first summer in college and I think the most interesting thing was just being able to like visit clients as like as like a kid right out of, right out of high school um, and just have that ha just have that like responsibility um, as a college student which I thought was quite interesting. Awesome and Sachin your insights? Yeah I'll kind of say the same thing as Nathan uh, I'm sure Chelsea has um, great insight as well from the partner perspective, but, but I'll, get, I'll do my best shot here. Um, for a high school or college student thinking about a career or a first step in consulting, I, I think there are three things that are really attractive. Um, the first is figuring out what you're excited about. Um, you get pretty quick and broad exposure to a number of industries, whether that's financial services, consumer, healthcare, whatever it may be. So it, it's a great way for a crash course in any number of those industries. Um, second is, as Nathan said, you get outsized responsibility at a very young age. Um, you know, if you compare it to banking where you may be just kind of just more responsive to the associate or the, the VP and doing a, a bit mundane work, um, consulting, you kind of get more responsibility than any 22 or 23 year old should. <laughs> Uh, at a young age. Um, so that's very cool. Um, and then the third thing, it, I think it's truly a crash course in business. Um, you learn how to synthesize, how to communicate to executives, how to manage and engage with people. Um, a lot of soft leadership skills that um, you learn on the job. Uh, and I think that was really valuable for me um, in the three years that I spent at McKinsey. And sorry, I'll add a fourth thing. And McKinsey consultants normally talk in three, so this is a bit out of step for me, but I'll say a fourth thing, um, which is uh, it's just an amazing experience to work for clients' most pressing problems. So whether you're at BCG, Bain, PwC, Deloitte, McKinsey, whatever it is, um, you are hired to answer the most pressing questions that company has and provide real insight that will move the business forward. So having insight and access to those problems and 
presenting coherent, real solutions to them was was very attractive to me. And that's why I chose not to go back to Goldman and, and join McKinsey, um, for those of you thinking about a, a career in investment banking versus consulting. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, and just kind of going off that as well. So Chelsea, we also have a couple questions um, from some people in, in here um, regarding consulting. So first, my first question is, how could students explore to figure out if consulting is for them? Because that's one big thing. Um, choosing, choosing a career in business or is, you've got so many options. So kind of how do students go about figuring whether consulting is for them? And secondly, um, what do you think is the most rewarding part about working in the consulting industry? Mm -hmm. So helpfully, PwC is quite active um, with um, not only high schools, but also universities. Um, so we have a couple of programs, one for high school students going into university, we call it like a traineeship. And then for university students, we have, um, I guess, summer vacation work, as well as a, a big graduate program. And so while we're at the schools and on campus, um, there's a really great opportunity to come and talk with some of our managers, partners, senior managers, um, to ask more about what consulting is um, and, and whether or not it would suit your skill set. I would say, um, you know, the, the people who like consulting um, quite inclusive. Um, you know, I think Nathan, you said solving problems like PwC's global purpose is actually to build trust in society and solve important problems. That is what we're here to do um, for our clients globally. Um, and really solving problems is, is if you love problem solving, I think consulting really is um, a great place for you. Um, I guess the exciting thing about consulting, so I've been at PwC now for over 20 years. And I think the thing that keeps me here really is the variety of work. Um, also the people, um, you know, meeting such amazing, you know, highly skilled, highly educated um, and really, um, uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to, how to put it, like energetic people um, has really kept me here. So I met my husband at PwC um, and a lot of my lifelong friends, uh, people that I started with as a graduate, so now as a partner, I'm really enjoying, I guess, that mentor role. So being able to um, interview young graduates, take them on and really teach them, um, you know, take them through the journey that I went on. So it's really rewarding. Fantastic. And what does a typical workday for you look like, Chelsea? It's well, maybe I'll do, the, I'll do the pre-COVID version and then the post-COVID All right, yeah, that, that'd be awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're very different. Um, I mean, certainly pre-COVID. Um, so interestingly, I'm, a, I guess, a deals partner, but I actually only work four days a week. Um, so I've got two children, a nine-year-old and a six-year-old, and working four days a week helps me um, balance um, those responsibilities. Um, but typically, I drive into work, um, so spend most of that time in the car, um, make phone calls usually all the way, get my clients before they get into their day um, ahead. Um, and then... As a partner, probably your day is, is largely filled with meetings. Um, so typically have sort of team and pipeline meetings at the start of the week um, to set the team up for what they're, they're doing in the year ahead. Um, we um, have been going to our project teams. So usually I'll have three or four projects going on at any one time. So it's checking in on those projects and then scheduling um, the relevant client interaction. Um, in Melbourne, we tend to work a lot in the office, but also um, because I do a lot of um, retail and consumer deals, I'm travelling out to client offices um, quite a bit as well. So I might have lunch with somebody and then you know, return to the office for the afternoon. Um, evening events tend to be kind of one, one or two um, evenings a week as well. Of course, all of that's changed now with yeah. COVID. Um, so I've been working from home since mid-March, um, as most of the Melbourne office has. Um, and I'm really fortunate that PwC had the foresight to um, go digital probably two or three years ago. So we moved awesome. all of our offices to um, what they call activity-based working. Um, so none of us have an office, none of us have a permanent desk. 
and we literally take a laptop, plug into a, a workstation in a, in a home um, level and, and really work quite flexibly. So that transition to home has been really good. Um, so now I get up, I go for my morning walk, get a takeaway coffee, um, come home, make sure the kids are on their school Zooms and school, um, set them up for the day and, and really spend the day actually on the phone and interacting with my team, you know, my clients um, in, I've got to think creatively these days in terms of <laughs> making it interesting. So virtual coffees, virtual lunch, you know, virtual wines, um, all sorts. <laughs> Fantastic. That sounds, that sounds really exciting. And also it's good to see PwC, you know, stepping up and being really prepared for anything the world throws at them. Like the fact that you were able to mobilize so easily at home was that's absolutely fantastic. Mm. That's awesome. And Sachin, just real quick as well. What does your typical work day look like? Yeah. Um, I, I, I'll speak more to the, the kind of, uh, first year or second year perspective, um, on the partner side, having spoken to McKenzie people recently, it's very much as Chelsea described, um, a lot of zoom meetings. Um, but you know, I think, Hopefully, by the time everyone on this call is thinking about a career in consulting, the world will be back to a normal place. So um, I'll do my best to describe what that feels like. Um, and this varies. It's important to know it's various consulting firm to consulting firm. But at least for McKinsey, it meant um, four days typically on the road um, at your client site, uh, whether that was a local client or a client um, in another state or city or country. Um, you would typically work, and there are a lot of questions in the chat about hours. Um, it varies based on project. If you're doing a diligence for private equity company, you might be working weekends. Um, but otherwise, it's, it's usually like an 8 to 8 p.m. type of job. Um, you certainly feel like you're on your email all the time. Um, but, but that's energizing. Um, I think that the, what's most exciting about being in consulting is you're in a room with three or four really smart, really talented people um, trying to answer really hard questions. And you get a lot of ownership around the problem that you're trying to solve. And you're expected to come to the table or a meeting with an answer, or at least half of an answer. Um, you propose that answer and then you discuss it. You figure out as a team whether it's the right answer or wrong answer, and then you get to present it to a client. Um, and all of that comes from the, the 12 hours a day that you spend kind of going through data and Excel, workshopping different slides, learning how to like craft the language on a specific slide. What does it mean to present to a VP versus an FVP, SVP versus the CEO of a business? Um, it's all varying levels of communication. Um, and your day-to-day -day is spent just kind of perfecting that. Um, and after two years, I, I think you know pretty well um, what, what those different levels should look like. So. Um, it's intense. I wouldn't say it's as intense as investment banking. Um, though personally, I, I felt it was more rewarding. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for your insight there. Um, and Jamie, I have a question for you and I'm sure a lot of students on the call would be really interested to know this. Um, but kind of what courses, what courses should students, um, study, um, in high school or, or subjects and also in university, if they're looking for a career in consulting slash business. Okay, awesome. So in high school, I think the first thing you need to be very solid at is math. Um, basically, you know, as a consultant, uh, even though you're not doing necessarily very advanced math, you're using math all the time and, you know, in modeling and business cases and, you know, valuation analyses, etc. So you've got to be pretty solid at math. So I think go deep there. Next up, I would probably recommend being very strong in English and also, you know, um, potentially economics. Uh, economics is optional, but English is very important because you spend a lot of time writing memos, you know, PowerPoints, uh, communicating with other staff, um, and concision is very well rewarded, especially at places like McKinsey. Sachin can tell you a lot about a lot of the structures they have to make sure that clients get the message, you know, very cleanly uh, when they do their presentations. So I think I'd recommend math and English. Um, I'd add some debating to that in school. I think it's very useful to be able to verbally present arguments well. And then um, if you can take a subject like business studies, which combines a bit of accounting, that would be useful. But um, that's typically not something you want to spend a, a full 
high school subject load on. I do it outside of school. You could use, for example, the Crimson Global Academy to take a, you know, AS Business Studies on the side, which is what I did um, in high school. And that will give you that kind of bridge. Um, the other thing you might want to do uh, on the applied side is physics, um, which will work on some of the same types of like formulas and logic you might use when you, when you take finance later on. Um, so I think uh, that'd be some of the main subjects. The final, final thing actually that comes to mind is computer science. Um, you may want to do that. A little bit of coding skills is useful, um, even for programming in Excel, uh, you know, making macros or, in, you know, in bigger statistical analyses you may come across. So that's some of the schools for high school. Now, moving to college and for some context, you know, we've seen about a thousand students now to top U.S. universities. And, you know, we've sent many alumni to, you know, McKinsey, Bain and BCG, as well as many of these other firms. So what I can see is first up, um, you know, you need to know a GPA. So your GPA is out of four. Uh, and it's very important when you apply for these consulting jobs, you typically need to have a 3.8 or four, out of four or higher. Um, and so the first thing I'd say is there's no point taking, for example, like you know, astrophysics if you're going to get a very low GPA, because it's going to really knock you out of contention for these top firms. So you've got to be a bit pragmatic with taking something that you can really you know, do well in. Subject to doing that, I'd recommend something in the STEM field. It doesn't need to be economics, but um, you know, uh, in my case, I took applied math economics at Harvard, which is generally a pretty good bet if you're interested in, you know, managing consulting or finance. So I think basically something STEM with a high GPA would be, you know, what I would advise. Awesome. Um, is there anything you did personally when you were in high school, um, apart from taking A-levels that really helps with kind of solidifying your, your direction to go to study business, Jamie? Yeah. So, um, I was kind of on my way, you know, planning to become a doctor at the age of sort of 14, 15. Um, and then I started to research the US and at a place like Harvard, um, uh, where I met Sasha, um, the most popular career tracks tend to be finance, consulting, entrepreneurship, uh, technology, not actually, um, you know, medicine as, you know, one of the most popular, although it's still quite popular as a graduate degree. So as I researched these schools, I became more aware of um, these pathways like Wall Street, you know, being an investment banker, being a hedge fund analyst, um, which is what I ended up doing. And um, uh, that, that was kind of on my mind. So I actually discovered these pathways by learning about what top kids at places like Harvard were doing. That kind of put it on my radar. The other experience I had was um, previously I loved math, but the only thing I thought I could do with math was potentially engineering, but I didn't want to do engineering. And so I sort of saw it as a bit of a um, you know, limited path, but that was very incorrect. Um, when I took economics and realized that actually that nicely combined math with my love of business um, you know, that, that really was, you know, quite a magic moment for me where I thought, oh, maybe I should, you know, go into economics. And it was post taking A-level economics that I, you know, became high conviction in that. I ended up applying to the UK for economics at Cambridge, as well as to schools like Wharton and then other, you know, uh, US schools for economics. So that was kind of my journey. Awesome. Thank you so much. And this is a question, um, I think for both Jamie and Chelsea, um, which would be really interesting to know, um, this, we, have, we have a couple questions about this in the Q&A, but firstly, how hard is it to get into a big firm, uh, big four firm after completing an undergraduate degree? So kind of dissecting that a little bit further, when you're looking at um, new applicants for your own companies, um, how important is their undergraduate degree and the university that they, they studied at? Do you look for, you know, the big Ivies or some top um, universities that they study at, or is it a little bit more than that? Um, maybe starting with Chelsea and then Jamie. Yeah, great. Um, I mean, it is, it is certainly challenging to get into a big four firm and, and the investment banks and some of the top tier law firms, for example. Um, I think what can make you stand out as a candidate is really the stuff that happens outside your academics. So, have you put yourself forward for leadership roles? What are your extracurricular activities? You know, are you involved with um, any charitable organisations? Like, you know, what, what are those passions beyond just being really smart um, that, you know, you, I guess contribute to be, you being a more rounded person than, you know, a smart person? Um, interestingly, at PwC, um, more and more we are actually um, anonymising CVs. So removing um, someone's name, removing someone's gender, removing someone's um, university or high school in, in Melbourne in particular, um, you know, where you went to high school can, can be, um, I guess, a, an area of bias 
in, um, in selection processes. So we're really trying to find those candidates that stand out um, and, you know, get through biases. And we really want a diverse um, graduate intake um, because really diversity, you know, we, we as PwC need to represent, I guess, the broader community. You know, we need, you know, all sorts of people really to make um, PwC successful. So, I'd say, yeah, more and more, you know, less about the academia and more about the well-rounded, you know, extracurricular stuff you do, leadership roles, etc. Awesome. And Jamie, yourself, when you're looking for... Um kind of people to work for Crimson, what's, what do you look for? Are the unis really a big standout for you or a little bit more than that? That's a good question. Um, let me answer to, to the first is what we look for at Tiger. Um, you know, at, at the you know, hedge fund I work for on Wall Street and then what we look for at Crimson because they're a little bit different. Um, at Tiger, uh, everyone in, in, in the hedge fund uh, had come from either Harvard, Yale, Duke or UNC. So very strong backgrounds. Most of them had MBAs from either Harvard or Wharton. So I think that um, within the US financial services sector, there's a huge focus on academic background because when you're in a country like, for example, New Zealand, there isn't much um, sort of uh, differentiation between the various universities. So employers don't put huge focus on which of the various schools you went to. In the US, there's so many options and there's quite a clear hierarchy that everyone sort of knows about that many firms will outsource their filtering to this hierarchy. And as a result, you know, a place like McKinsey will take, you know, uh, what, like, you know, an order of magnitude more kids from Harvard than from, you know, say a school like, um, you know, UC Santa Barbara, where, where um, you know, it's very actually quite hard to, to recruit. So what I would say is um, if you're passionate about working in management consulting or banking in the US, um, you know, it's a really big advantage to go to a strong undergraduate school. Now, um, uh, in Australia, if you go to a lot of the main schools, um, you know, you can get into these firms as long as you have a very high GPA. Um, for example, McKinsey in Sydney, you know, usually is looking for top debaters very regularly or people um, with very good academic backgrounds. That tends to be quite a classic mold. Um, one of, um, you know, uh, a friend of Crimson, Lauren Humphreys, for example, is, is working over there at the moment. Um, now, uh, as far as what we look for at Crimson, um, you know, we're very diverse in our hiring. We operate in 20 plus different countries. You know, we employ people uh, who have, you know, bachelor's degrees from, you know, local universities all the way through to our consultants who do typically come from these top schools because they're advising students directly on the admissions process. So it really depends on the... Oh, looks so like... identify people's, um, you know, real uh, kind of capabilities as opposed to going purely off degree. But I would say, you know, Crimson's a little bit unique in that like we really really understand what these degrees mean because we advise so many kids getting into them so we don't we don't necessarily overly weight them um all the time for every role but um that is not true for all firms there's a, there's a lot of focus on these degrees within the u.s in particular awesome and um chelsea a question for you from a couple of people as well um what are the key skills that you look for someone um in a consultant and what are some things that students can stand out i know that you did say that you look for students who uh, do a little more extracurricular work, but I know the majority of people here are in high school. So is there anything you can recommend that they can do in high school and what are the key skills you look for? Yep. So um, I'll even, even take you to a job interview. So, so when I'm interviewing a graduate for the role, um, you know, really someone who is very engaging because you think about um, PwC is a people firm, like our biggest asset are the people that work with work for us. So, you know, we need to be, you know, relation, be able to build relationships, build rapport, um, get along with people, create conversation, you know, and again, you know, have an outside interest, like we really love, you know, a, a candidate that is the conversation is easy. You know, obviously then we go through the capabilities. So, you know, are you a good problem solver? Have you taken leadership roles? How do you work within? How do you work in a team? Um, so asking questions like that. Um, but what I really love at the end is when students come to me and actually they have some really sensible questions. So nothing worse in an interview when you say, "So, do you have any questions for me?" Um, and the candidate says, "No, not really." <laughs> um, so you know, really do your homework. You know, do your homework on the individual that's interviewing you. And also, you know, the firm, um, think of some really clever questions at the end. That is, that is absolutely impressive um, in an interview. 
Awesome. And Sachin, a question for you. A couple of people have asked this. Um, how did you end up choosing consulting over investment banking? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I was expecting a follow-up on uh, how to prep in high school to be a consultant. Um, but yeah, you know, I think at the end of the day for me, um, the trade-off between Goldman and McKinsey was um, the diversity of business experiences I would get, um, as well as the responsibility I was going to get at a young age. Um, the reality is in investment banking, you learn a ton about how to build a great Excel model, the financials of a business, um, the core of what maybe drives like financial value. Um, but at the end of the day, you're, you're more of a, a doer than a thinker. Um, and the appeal to McKinsey was you could be a thinker, you could have more responsibility, you could see a diversity of problems and a diversity of industries. Um, and all of those things together were great. Um, and I saw some questions around exit opportunities. For me, um, the exit opportunities felt largely the same, um, and if not larger. Um, you could go into private equity, you could go into the world of startups, you could go be an operator at a bigger company, go to business school, you could go into the venture world, which I'm in now. Um, so for all those reasons, it, it was the same. Um, and I mean, speaking strictly from the McKinsey and Goldman perspective, uh, one of the things I always heard was that the talent trade-off between McKinsey and Goldman was with each other versus like other banks and other consulting firms. So um, maybe I was dealing with a, like a, a, a privileged person's choice, but, but that's how I thought about it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and just jumping back on um, things that you can do in high school. So Nathan, this is... A question for you. Um, in your experience, um, how did participating in a case competition in high school uh, set you up for your business studies career? Did you feel it helped you to um, practice applying theory in a like a real world situation? And would you recommend um, kids in high school participating in a case comp? Yeah, sure. So I think um, one part of the question would be that it's definitely a really good thing to do if you're looking to get into like a business school or like really any sort of like the top, the top US schools because generally the top kids at these colleges are the ones doing the case competitions or, or, the, or the stock pitches. So if you can show that you're being proactive already in high school, doing, doing the things that the top kids are doing already in college, like it's just very easy for the um, admission officers to see that you're like a great fit for... Um, the top schools in the US. And in terms of just applying knowledge, um, it's, it's very different to what you would learn in like, in high, like a high school class. Like there's very little that I think you can apply from your high school classes and you, and you really do have to think outside of the box. So um, it is like doing these competitions are, are definitely a, a very good sort of um, thought experiment um, and, a, and, a, and a way to like challenge yourself um, to like kind of, make the most out of the little that you know if that makes sense like obviously like you know like your your basic maths and like um basic like economics but just like really making the most out of that and leveraging what you know about the world um i think that's a really useful thing to do as a as a high school student and it kind of gives you the taste of um, what you'd be doing in college as well did you learn any skills um it, when you were participating in your case comp um, that you use today that you would not have learnt um, in high school, just sitting in class? Um, I think in general, it was just like a lot of like soft skills, like learning how to like present, um, how to like synthesize ideas um, and like obviously how to like work in a team setting. I think high, like generally high schools don't do a very good job of like doing group work and like teamwork. Like it's pretty like, it's pretty mediocre, um, but like for a case competition, like working with your team and like presenting in a team is like super important and being able to like, um, like I guess bond really well with your team is um, I guess like a criteria for success. So I think that's one thing that I, that I learned um, doing case comps at an, at an early stage, yeah. Awesome. Um, and just, um, just some quick poll results. Um, Fear, uh, more than half of you are actually looking and considering career in consulting, which is really exciting. 
And also the majority of you are looking in studying, uh, studying a business degree um, after high school. So Nathan, just one really quick one. When you were in high school, what kind of, what kind of made you sold on the um, career choice of going to business and consulting? Because to be honest with you, with myself, with my personal experience, um, I had no idea what I wanted to do until literally um, after sitting my year 12 exams. And uh, at this point I realized, oh, wow, it may be a little bit, maybe a little bit too late to kind of decide on what I wanted to do now. So um, just to help guide these kids, like at what point did you feel like you were ready to set on your path of business and why did you want to do it? Um, so like, just to clarify, is it like pretty much why, like how I chose to study business and essentially yeah. And, yeah and kind of like when did you reach the point where you're like yes this is what i want to do i mean i think i'm still kind of like answering that question right now yeah, myself. Awesome. <laughs> but um like as a high school student i think it's like a very attractive um like course or like major to go into because the career paths are like very clear like you know that if you study business like these like you can go into consulting, you can go to investment banking, like various, various sort of finance roles, marketing roles, sales roles. Whilst like if you studied something like chemistry or like, um, like the natural sciences, I, I would say like the career paths are less defined. Um, and um, like, not to say that you can't go into the same roles studying those um, fields. But I think just for me, it was, it was, it was very attractive to be able to see like, I, like I can see like these kids going into these companies studying um, studying finance management and all of those business courses and that's kind of what sold me um, from the start as a, as a high school student at least fantastic thank you so much um, well right now what we're going to do is um, speaking about things you can do in high school and case competitions um, what we have um, today is Henry from Tiger Global case um, and Henry is just going to give you a quick rundown on the upcoming Tiger Global Case Competition, which is a really exciting opportunity for anyone looking to participate in a really full on um, real world business problem solving um, competition that is open to any high school student. So Henry, please take it away. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. So hey, everyone. Um, it's really great to see that a lot of you are interested in going into a career in consulting. So just wanted to jump in to tell you guys about this really special extracurricular opportunity that's going to you know, help your applications to those target universities if you want to get into consulting, as well as you know, provide you with those like chances to get a taste of what consulting is like. So this is the Tiger Global Case Competition. So it's the world first global virtual business case competition for high school students. So this is something that usually you would do when, once you go into uni, but we're offering it to high school students for the first time. So just a quick note on what a case competition is. So in a case competition, you adopt the role of a CEO or a management consultant, and then you kind of, you're presented with a business that is facing a challenge and it's your job to solve that challenge and use your problem solving skills and your analytical skills. So, you know, on the left here, uh, no, on the left here, you'll see some quick details about, um, you know, who's eligible to apply. So on the right, you'll see a quick rundown of what the Tiger Global Case Competition is looking like for this year. So you'll see that on September the 5th and 12th, um, you're gonna get one week to solve and submit a regional case. So that's really going to give you a taste of what management consultants do when it comes to receiving kind of the case of a new company and then working together in teams of three or four and then presenting a solution to that. And then you'll see, um, you know, as we move through the months of September and October, we'll be holding a lot of workshops and more webinars just like this to kind of guide you along and teach you those skills um, that are going to help you get into consulting. So um, just a quick note on the prizes and the benefits. So um, on the right, you'll see that we have a lot of great prizes. Um, so on the first place, you see that um, one of the prizes is a mentorship with Julian Robertson who's, you know, a philanthropist, billion investor. Um, so he actually founded Tiger Management, which um, Jamie was also involved in. And then you'll see that actually our second place prize is a mentorship with Sir John Key, who's the former prime minister of New Zealand. And then for third place, we have mentorship with Jamie. So our very own panelist here. 
So, you know, I, I, I was a participant in the Thai Global Case Competition for 2018. And I found that it really helped me when it came to applying for the US and the UK. So, you know, having this on my CV and on my resume helped me with my application to uh, Oxford as well as uh, the University of Pennsylvania. And so, you know, getting accepted at those universities, I think is, um, you know, largely in thanks to, you know, participating in this competition and kind of, you know, realizing how interesting I found consulting and, you know, having that achievement on my CV. Awesome. Thanks so much, Henry. And thank you so much for everyone who's answered the poll so far, if they're interested in participating um, in the Tiger Global Case Cup. If you haven't already, please check out the poll. Um, I can see 128 of you have answered the poll. Thank you so much, guys. Um, and the vast, vast majority of you have um, are looking to participate, which is super exciting. Um, for those looking for top uni admission or anyone who's looking for a career in business, I highly recommend participating in the case comp because you get to basically practically solve an actual real world business problem. And this is experience that you won't get sitting in a high school classroom. And I think it's a great way to not only network with like-minded students, meet some amazing experts and people, but it's a good opportunity to kind of apply your theory into practical situations. And if this is kind of like the stuff that you like doing, then career consulting could be, you know, the one for you. Um, Jamie, this is a quick question. So just kind of stepping out of the consulting bubble for just a quick second. Um, I actually have a lot of students asking um, about entrepreneurship. So a lot of students um, in in the question section have a lot of business ideas already in high school and they kind of want to undergo that. Now I know with Crimson, you started it at a very young age, like straight out of high school. Um, you're like, yep, yeah, I've got to, I'm going to do this thing. I want to help support students who uh, achieve their dreams. So for all those kids looking for an entrepreneurship career, what is the advice that you have for them? And what are the tips that you have for them thinking about it in high school so that as soon as they're out, they can, they can get it launched. Awesome. A couple of quick things that I would jump on. Um, the first thing is that uh, at this current time, it's easier to raise money from investors as a young person than it ever was before. Um, this is partially because there's a lot more capital that is being invested into new companies, but also because there's a lot of uh, willingness to back young founders and train them um, because they typically can have, for example, very good technical coding skills or um, you know, have a lot of basically energy to build a company you know, quickly uh, if the space is right. So it is not necessarily common to create companies when you're super young, but it is more common now than it ever has been before. Um, so we were, for example, able to raise about, you know, uh, 7 million New Zealand dollars, you know, before we sort of turned 20. So I think um, that that's the first point that I would make that this is very achievable uh, if you see your mind to it. The second thing I would say is um, uh, there's two types of companies really to be aware of. The first are businesses, which I would say uh, do not have, big capital requirement. So for example, let's say you want to sell shoes online um, through a Shopify store that you source from Alibaba. This is the classic kind of business that I see many students doing where they find a product they can sell for a markup. Maybe they build a brand and they start selling and distributing. Um, that's one type of business. You know, Crimson and other types of businesses that, you know, uh, are known as venture back companies, are companies that go ahead and raise a lot of money and then try and, um, you know, grow quite a large business quickly, often with technology behind it. To build that kind of company, which is typically the kind of company that a lot of our students want to build, um, there are a number of pathways that you should consider. The first is Y Combinator, which Sashin uh, is currently working at. Y Combinator is the world's top business incubator for young people, um, or for anybody, but mainly young people, to launch companies. It's created Bricks, you know, Airbnb, um, DoorDash, a bunch of other you know, $10 billion plus uh, or billion dollar plus companies. Um, and that, that's already had two Crimson alumni go through it, um, Samil and Brendan, who are now, you know, in the YC batch at the moment. And so that's a very natural pathway you can go through. The other thing I recommend is, you know, get a very solid degree from one of these top universities, um, because going to a place like a Wharton or a Harvard really helps with fundraising, and it gives you a lot more credibility and, and access to people that, you know, could back your company. Um, so I think there are a couple of things that I'd recommend. The final kind of tactical thing is, um, you know, we recently launched our Crimson Global Academy, one of the main types of students joining our school are those who love entrepreneurship. So we recently ran an event actually um, with some of the team from Y Combinator. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of dedicated programs to help young people, you know, become entrepreneurs. So if you are in high school and you want to get involved in that part-time or full-time, 
um, either alongside your school or instead of your current school, um, that's a wonderful option to look at. And it's very popular right now in both Australia and New Zealand, particularly given COVID. So there are a couple of tips that I would give you um, for entrepreneurship. Awesome. Fantastic insights. Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, this is a very interesting question. And I think Chelsea and Sachin, you guys can answer this. Um, because we've been talking about consulting so much and how great it is and all the opportunities you can get from, from it. I think this is a, probably a really good part of it to look at, but what is the most difficult part about consulting? So Chelsea, start us off. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> that is a big one. It really is. Um, difficult part. Um, I know a lot of consultants work a lot right, and yeah, travel a lot. I so. know. I think <laughs> there's probably one on a personal level um, and maybe, you know, I guess some challenges that come up um, when you're working in teams and working with, um, you know, clients, etc. So, yeah, on a personal level, um, you can work really hard. So I think back to my time in London. So I was in London in our transaction services team from when I was a manager to when I was a director. And I think for those seven years, I worked the hardest I've ever worked. So, you know, regularly sort of in the office till nine o'clock every night, traveling a lot. So around Europe, but also to the US, um, you know, high pressure um, engagements, because um, you're dealing with, you know, transactions and private equity that are, that are quite demanding. So, you know, on a personal level that can take its toll. So um, helpfully, as I said, I met my husband at PwC. So he's always been hugely understanding about what I do and um, the demands that are placed on my personal time. Um, but it's funny because of the people at PwC, um, those seven years, I've never worked so hard, but I've never laughed so much. Mm. Like, I think it's just the energy you get working, you know, to Sachin's point earlier on a problem with a group of people and really, you know, throwing mud at a wall to try to solve an yeah. issue. Like it's so energizing. So yeah, working hard, um, obviously, you know, there, there are some personal sacrifices, you know, I'd say um, on a professional level, you know, some of the hardest days I have are where, you know, you deal with difficult clients. So, you know, really having to lean into your personal skills in terms of navigating difficult situations. So I think, you know, I take it in a deal context. So I'm usually working, um, say I'm working on the buy side. So my client, say a private equity house is trying to buy a business and I'm trying to negotiate with the target to give me as much information as possible. So, you know, you've really got to lean into your personal skills um, and strategies around, you know, whether that's verbal, written, um, you know, all sorts of communications and negotiation skills to, you know, to get what you need to do your job. So that can really be quite challenging um, because you can imagine in a situation where a target doesn't want to be acquired yep. or the management team just want to do their day job. They don't want to bother with this transaction. Um, yeah, that can really, um, yeah, be quite challenging. Yeah. Awesome. And Sachin. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I guess I'd say there are a lot of challenging elements. Um, but for someone considering a first career out of college, um, there's probably no greater accelerant to a career in business than consulting. Um, if you want to go into entrepreneurship, operating, and even investing, I might get some pushback on that one, but um, you just learn so much, as Chelsea said, in that short time. And the sacrifices are obvious. Um, you travel, you're maybe away from friends, but the reality is all of your friends are also kind of hustling in their own way in that time as well. So the time away is actually a time to really just obsess over your work. I know that sounds a bit masochistic, but um, it's a time where you don't feel pulled to go out to dinner or whatever it is. Um, it, it's a great way to just focus. Um, so yes, the hours are long, the travel can be difficult and the clients are, are probably the toughest Heart at times. Um, it forces you to be patient. Um, it forces you to be empathetic. Uh, and those are real skills that you learn 
only by doing the job. Um, so yeah, to answer the question more directly, I'd say the toughest days I had a consult as a consultant were when um, you know you're you you might be working with a client who is doing layoffs who use you as someone who is trying to eliminate their job or their friend's job or whatever. So you really have to come to the ground and to the client with a sense of empathy and compassion. So um, it's hard, but, but worth doing. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Nathan, um, I just have a question for you and being yourself, um, seeing through high school and then now um, studying at Wharton is a very big feat. Um, what sort of extracurricular opportunities do you recommend for getting into these top universities? Uh, well, I guess like beside case competitions, like this one, uh, for example, I think some top ones would just be, um, I guess for like business schools in particular, like model, model your own debating, like those ones that where you can sort of show that you can work in a team, you're able to speak in public and speak very clearly. Like those are very strong um, as well as just like starting your own clubs, like being very, proactive about like what you are interested in because I think most Australian high schools like there's not a big emphasis on extra cur curriculars outside of sport or like maybe like there might be like a few academic clubs here and there but let's say you're interested in like like origami for example like there's not gonna be an origami club at your average high school I think just like starting like things that you are interested in personally um is a very uh is a very meaningful thing to show to an admission officer. And like, it doesn't always have to be business or finance or whatever related, um, just as long as it shows something about you and tells a story about you. I think that's probably the most useful thing that you can do. Yeah, I'll give you a good example. So I've just recruited a senior consultant in my team and her hobbies are scuba diving and playing the drums. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and I just thought that was awesome. So. Uh... <laughs> And I think that's a lot of things as well. Um, I think people don't realize on outside of the academics and your experience, um, a lot of companies and even universities, um, especially the top um, universities in the U S um, they look for someone who fits the culture of, of their place. Like it's not only important that you have the right skills and the right background and experience and everything else, but finding someone that fits the culture, whether it be through extracurriculars or their personality is super important. Um, and I know a lot of people do get disheartened sometimes when they get let down by a university or let down by an employer, um, even though they have such a great resume and they have such a great experience line, but sometimes it's more so about whether they see you fitting in with the culture and being able to grow with the company kind of thing. And, that, and that's something that, is super important, especially when you go out into the workforce, fitting in with the culture and l developing yourself and getting better at what you do is such an important thing. And um, I think something, that's something to keep in mind when you're out there into the workforce looking for your next internship or next uh, job. And speaking about that as well, Chelsea, um, what are, a lot of people are asking, are there um, some high school internships that you guys offer or, or you know of or anything that they can do during high school or as a first year uni student um, landed internship with a big company such as PwC? Yeah, so mo I believe most of our um, intake comes in your final year. So I think it's sort of the summer before your final year. So in Australia, that's sort of December, January, and we take you on for um, two months, eight weeks, I think, eight to ten weeks. Um, I'd have to check. I think on our website or certainly on our LinkedIn, there'll be some information about high school programs. Um, last time I was involved, um, we did have high school programs. So effectively you apply when you're in year 12 and then while you're at university or you, you do university part-time for the first two years and come and work with us um, part-time as well while doing university in the evenings. And then you go back to university for two years full time to finish your degree before returning to PwC. So um, that was quite a popular um, route for, you know, the, the high school students we really wanted to grab early before um, yep. the likes of investment banks and um, McKinsey get their, their hands <laughs> on them. <laughs> so um, yeah, I would say go to our website, um, follow us on LinkedIn are the best ways to get information about those sorts of programs. All right. And Sachin, 
yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Sasha, no, go, go on. Just uh, elaborate on that. Yeah, I guess I was going to bring it back to, to brass tacks here um, in terms of what I, I think the people on the call are most curious about. So, I mean, I, I think it's very hard to say in ninth grade or 10th grade or 11th grade, I want to be a consultant at McKinsey or a banker at Goldman Sachs. Um, but there are a number of things you can consciously do to kind of set yourself up for that path. Um, and I remember, you know, it's funny being on this call with Nathan. I remember working with Nathan when he was applying to, to Wharton and I was working with Jamie at Crimson and I'm sure Nathan can tell you whether I was a good or a bad coach, but it seems to have worked out. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's basically two things you can do. Um, you can follow the things that you're really excited about and do those things really well, um, which Jamie is a great example of someone who's done that. Um, and the second thing is you can obsessively optimize. Um, the reality is that the, at least the US system is something that can be, I wouldn't say gamed, but it can be coached. Um, so working with services like, like Crimson or, or anyone else, um, you can craft kind of the narrative around what you're excited about, what you want to do. And, you know, it's really just about taking the step in the right direction. So it's not about in ninth grade saying, I want to be a McKinsey consultant, but it's in ninth grade saying, what are the things that I need to do to get into a top school in the US, which will give me access to these career paths in investment banking or consulting. Um, so optimizing every step of that journey, whether it's starting an origami club, um, starting some sort of community endeavor, playing a sport, whatever it is in high school that gets you through that next stage. And then crafting that story in a coherent application to an Ivy League or equally respected school, um, that's the first step. Um, and then when you get there, it's, it's just taking the next step of like, okay, this is what McKinsey or Bain or BCG or PwC or Deloitte or Goldman look at for me in terms of what I need to do as, a, as an eligible candidate. And once you're there, you do all of those things. So the thing that was most useful to me was one, working with a service to help craft that narrative, but two, following in the footsteps of someone that I kind of looked up to, who was one or two years ahead of me. So for maybe a lot of people on the call, that's someone like Nathan, um, who has figured this out and ended up in a great place. Um, so that's kind of what I'd say is, is just, stepping back as if I were in everyone's shoes on this call, I wouldn't be obsessed about like the skills or classes I need to take in high school, but it's about optimizing every step of that journey, if that makes sense. Uh, Jamie, I'm not sure if you have any, any thoughts on that. Yeah, sure. I, I would say um, kind of echoing on this, you know, Nathan's a shiny example of kind of how, how well this can work. Um, you know, he started off in high school, very ambitious guy, um, wanted some direction around, you know, what pathways could be interesting. And then has been on this tremendous kind of multi-year career arc. And um, it's been seven years now at Crimson. We've seen students now from all over the world. But for those of you from Australia, New Zealand, a huge number of kids from ANZ um, that have come through Crimson and are now sitting in the McKinsey's, the Baines, the BCG's. So we have experience not only getting into these top schools um, and really optimizing your profile, but also helping you land those you know, top tier jobs following it. And the methodologies that we teach and focus on, like you've heard from today's call, um, you know, really look far beyond just the college degree, um, which, you know, is crucial, um, but is an ingredient that, you know, really powerful career that we aspire to help you build. Um, so, uh, of course, compete in TGCC, but also reach out to us if you're thinking about, um, you know, really taking this path seriously. Um, you, know, you can speak to many of our alumni who are at these consulting firms and jump on board with Crimson to help give you that advantage that students like Nathan have really benefited from. Awesome. And just a uh, last question before um, we sign off for the night. Um, Jamie, I think this one's a really good question um, and it involves, it's kind of basically what you did. Um, so how can kind of one move from New Zealand out of high school um, to UK, to the US and not only study there and be involved in a whole new world, but also kind of like put your feet in, into, the, um, into the business world overseas? It's a great question. So, I mean, the, the transformative moment for me was really my first year, freshman year at Harvard, where I, um, you know, suddenly got exposed to the finance societies, the consulting societies, people from the US that, you know, had been involved in entrepreneurship, the kind of speakers coming around on campus that could share 
inspiring stories about their times at Blackstone or Y Combinator. And then being around that kind of environment of success, which makes you naturally more ambitious. So what you have to focus on in high school is getting into one of these top schools. That's the crucial milestone. Once you've landed your offer, you've got all these options at the table and, and that world will become very clear to you because many of your fellow classmates will be shooting for that as well. So I think um, you know, uh, your education is the biggest source of mobility across country and across income group uh, that really exists. And so um, you know, I think don't worry so much about you know, what necessarily is gonna happen you know, much later in your career, but really focus on nailing that first undergrad degree. I'd also add that your undergrad degree has the highest leverage of all your degrees. So um, uh, for example, you know, having gone to a good undergraduate school, it's gonna boost your odds dramatically of top MBA programs, et cetera. Um, GSB, where Sashin is about to start, and I was able to attend quite recently, has about 40 kids from Harvard of the 400 kids in the program. So about 10% of kids come from one university, which is you know, obviously a massive overrepresentation compared to um, most schools. So you, know, you wanna give yourself the best foot forward, which means nailing that high school to university pathway that's the crucial thing to focus on. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for everyone for joining in today. That's all the time we have for, um, for the Q&A session. Sorry, we couldn't get to your questions. There were so many coming through and so many good ones. Tried our best to uh, kind of get you the best questions answered. Um, so going on from this, um, you'll receive a follow-up from TGCC for those who are looking to participate. And we hope to see you on there. From all the panelists and myself, thank you so much for spending your Saturday evening or from wherever you are in the world with us tonight. Um, and we hope you gained a lot of insight into the world of consulting and also just business in general. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great evening. Stay safe and have a great weekend. Thank you so much.